Paul's my your alter ego, your guy who's like yeah. right. turn the business off. I can't ever turn the whatever. I, it just never turns. So when I when I get to a point in the night where I can actually do that, I think is where Paul comes out. So as soon as you become your real self, you I stop caring. Paul comes out, and maybe Paul is yeah. exactly who you are. And maybe we should, so. but send Paul to therapy. And you like, I agree. One of the reasons why I'm always badgering you, like I have for the last hour and a half, the whole thing about having lofty goals but not really feeling comfortable saying, "I want to be bigger than George Strait. I want to be bigger than Garth Brooks. I want to be a better songwriter than all you motherfuckers." Like. The killer mentality. That's in there. That's Paul. Now, Paul doesn't have to be a dick about it. This is where we right. get to all the time. Because I'm like, right. wait, I'm, I'm not sure I'll ever get there. But if you don't state what you want, how are you going to get there? Because it ain't going to be by luck. So speaking of middle fingers, which I love about, because a whole lot of this conversation is also about how you don't really very readily use the middle finger. <laughs> right. But what I've always loved about hanging out with you, especially late at night, is Paul. Paul. Can we talk about Paul for a minute? <laughs> you really want to? Was that, was that us bring that up? That's why you? you're here. <laughs> well, yeah. That's why most people like this me. Is, Paul's my- Your alter ego. Your alter guy ego. who's like, yeah. does, he, does he get to say mean shit that you just can't bring yourself to say? <laughs> people is, either love Paul- I love or him. Or they hate him. And hate him. Yeah. But when he comes out, is it a- do you, do you feel him like I know we're I'm, I'm making this know. into something more real than it is. Is it a conscious decision to go? You know what, man? No, it's not. I'm gonna let this happen because I'm tired of this shit. No, it's not conscious at all. Uh, sadly, sorry to say that, but it's not. Um, but that's my. I have a hat that I got made in Key West, Becca, that makes the inappropriate trucker hats. I have one that I said, please, I need you to make me this one. Who the hell put Paul on the guest list? Because I never know when he's gonna show up. And that's the truth. I mean, it really, it kind of depends on the funk that I'm in. Or but it doesn't seem like it's an inebriation thing. It does. I mean, maybe I know probably that. Probably is. Yeah. I know that it happens oftentimes when you're drinking or doing whatever you're doing, but it doesn't feel like Paul ain't sloppy. No, no, he's not slurring his words or any of that. But um, there's a, I, I will say this. I have a brain that like never turns off. Right. That's, that's why I'm kind of quiet most of the time. Most of the time I'm just sitting, absorbing it all. And like my brain never stops thinking, never stops working, never stops overthinking, never stops worrying. Like you, are you wondering where my angles are? No, no. I'm just saying it. It never stops. Like it just, I can't ever turn it off. I can't ever turn the business off. I can't ever turn the whatever. It just never turns. So when I, when I get to a point in the night where I can actually do that, I think is where Paul comes out. Because so actually, I you're a worrying. dick. I stop worrying. I stop caring. As so much. as soon as you become your real self, you I stop caring. Paul comes out, and maybe Paul is yeah. exactly who you are. And maybe we should, so. but send Paul to therapy. And he, like, That's what Paul Thorne says. He says that we are who we are. Everyone tries to blame it on on alcohol, on like, but he says that we become who we really are. I agree. And I think you can get there without alcohol or without anything else. Oh, totally, totally. And I think- But he says people use it as an excuse. I agree. One of the reasons why I'm always badgering you, like I have for the last hour and a half, is that the whole thing about having lofty goals, but not really feeling comfortable saying, I want to be bigger than George Strait. I want to be bigger than Garth Brooks. I want to be a better songwriter than all you motherfuckers. Like the killer mentality that's in there. That's Paul. Now, Paul doesn't have to be a dick about it, but you haven't given him a chance to, well, to, 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 uh, to sand out the rough edges and be like, okay. Right. Meet Paul in the middle and be like, Jack, if you think I don't want to write songs better <laughs> than Paul Thorne, better than you, better than w- Willie, better th- like, then why the fuck would I be doing this? Because I can say, like, not because I'm, comp- but we, this is where we right. get to all the time. Because I'm like, right. wait, I'm, I'm not sure I'll ever get there. But if you don't state what you want, how are you going to get there? Because it ain't going to be by luck. Um, but somehow you've gotten, like, that's 
that's no degradation on yeah. your songs are badass. They've stopped me in my tracks. So long Sixth Street. I just and, I've always just tried to be I don't I don't know that I necessarily need any of that. You know, I don't need that. Um I don't need to have goals of needing to be bigger or better than someone. That's just not what's important to me in my life. It never has been with anything. My my important thing is having integrity and having being honest, you know, like yeah. at the end of the day, they say, you know, they always say, where do you want to be in 10 years? Like the only, th the only answer I've ever had is I just want people to talk great. I want them to say he, he, he was a good, he's a good dude. He carried himself well. He did what was right. You know, the things that my parents taught me, I want to, you know, I still, I still. Well, you got that in spades. I still, you know, I still feel like I talk to my parents all the time and still ask them for those things. Like, you know, hey, give me some advice. Like, tell me, tell me how to, you know, be a good kid, be a good dude. It's Paul the guy that gets pissed off when we're supposed to be somewhere at five and I show up at 515 and you're like. Sometimes. Fuck you, Ingram. How come Paul's you the guy that like when I. Like I, I, I will kind of take it and take it and take it and just, and then I'll take it a lot longer than most. Like I will, I will, I'll um, get pushed and get pushed and then all of a sudden erupt, you know, that's where the Paul comes in or you just lose it. And that, that's kind of a, uh, my, my mom's side of the family. That's their trait, like pretty sweet people until we get pushed to the limits. So you're the you're the you're the straw that broke the camel's back kind of guy, kind yeah, of anger, like, kind of oh man, and then you go over the line, you know, right? And uh, but but I don't know, man. I don't know how that really uh, I affects see affects my career. Well, you know? I don't think it affects your career. I, however, I, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> not not a. There's nothing ne like that's a whole thing. It's like discussing this stuff for me is oh, yeah. is more of an, no, a, a, is more of like, huh. Well, if in 10 years, if you've been saying the same answer for 10 years, and I guarantee you for the last 20 years, in 10 years, you've you've been exactly who you said you were before that. Yeah, well. You want to be the guy who's honest, integrity, shows up and does the job, gets there on time, does sound check, signs the autographs, is good to his fans. Do my job right. Do okay. Job. But and, Paul, and every, is, Paul sometimes like is the guy, like, that's the guy who's underneath there going, how come – how come so-and-so gets to act like a prick and everybody still loves, in fact, he's selling more tickets than me. How come so-and-so gets to be a drunk? How come so-and-so gets to be an asshole? And Paul's going, fuck those guys. <laughs> Cause of course I could act that way, of course. but I don't because it's not right. Of course. Okay. Well, we all have that. Yeah. There, there's a, uh, there's a part of, there's a part of that that comes out for sure. I mean, I, I, I see people fly by all the time, younger artists that are opening for me. And then all of a sudden they're going by, or even my peers that I'm like, you know, why does everybody love this guy so much or that woman so much or whatever, when it's, I, I've always, my mentality has never been about how successful can I be? My mentality has always been do the work. Do the work and and everything else will take care of itself. That's the reason I jumped straight back into more records when the label thing fell apart. That's the reason I've always pushed myself because I just keep myself busy by working my ass off. And I feel like everything else will take care okay, of itself. Okay, let me ask you this. My dad has always said, you take care of the small money and the big money take care of the pennies takes care of itself. Of right? It's true. So that's what I've always done. That's my mentality. I've Peyton Manning, Deion Sanders. Right. Who you choose? Peyton Manning. Every day, every chance, every, every, every time. Orange Fanta or Big Red? Big Red. Big Red. <laughs> Those aren't opposites. <laughs> they're not opposites, but they're very different. Okay. O Orange Crush or Big Red? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're going with Big, Big Red, Red still? I'm going Big Red. <laughs> George Strait or Garth Brooks? George Strait. Of course. And there's here's, another here's one. Hold up. 1970s, early 80s, Dallas Cowboys, Houston Oilers. Oh, Cowboys. So see, there's Paul. <laughs> <laughs>